Hello, I'm Dr. Hassan Dohid with an amazing topic as usual, case control studies versus retrospective cohort studies with examples. Case control studies versus retrospective cohort studies with examples. Yes, I created a video last year on the same topic on the difference between retrospective cohort and the case control studies. And so many of you liked it, appreciate the video. However, there were some messages I received and some of you requested that I make another video with examples. So I decided to update this with the 2022 version of the video with some examples so that those who still have some confusion, they can remove their confusion and they have the clarity of the idea and the concept of case control studies and the retrospective cohort studies. So let's begin. As we already know that the case control studies and the retrospective cohort studies, both are the observational studies. It means in these studies, we do not do any manipulation. The scientist does not do any manipulation, does not intervene, does not give any intervention, does not give any medication. The scientist will just observe. The scientist will just look at the population, will collect the data by just looking at the people. He or she will not give anything to the patient or ask the patient to do anything and look at the after effects of that instruction or that medication. They are just looking at people. So this is the concept number one. Now you understand that they both are observational studies. Now one more thing that is common in both of these studies is in both of these studies, you will go into the past. Right now, for example, we have the year 2022. In both of these studies, you will go back into the past. For example, let's say 2001. Now how will we do it? Let's take an example of the case control study first. In case control study, you collect a sample, a sample selection. The sample selection is based on the basis of outcome, on the basis of disease. You know the disease and you do the sample selection on the basis of disease. And once you have those disease patients, you will go into the past of those patients. Now, how do you go into the past? You don't have the back to the future car to go into the past, right? The movie back to the future in that you had the, you had seen that there was a car in which they used to go into the past, but unfortunately you don't have that car what do you do how do you go into somebody else's past you will go into somebody else's past by looking at the clinical records electronic medical records asking questions taking proper history clinical history asking questions from the patient or asking questions from the family members or primary physician you collect the information by going into the past of this patient from this patient right now you got the information so you got into the past without a time machine without a car without a time machine you went into the past of this patient this is how the case control is done the same thing you do in the retrospective cohort studies you will go into the past but here the sample selection is not done on the basis of outcome it is done on the basis of either the characteristics of the population or it is done on the basis of risk factor so this is the major difference between the case control Control studies and the retrospective cohort studies the sample selection in case control I'll repeat again in case control the sample selection is done on the basis of the outcome or the disease while in the retrospective cohort the sample selection is done on the basis of risk factor or the characteristics of the population this is a major difference many people say that what is the difference I don't even understand what is the difference there is no difference that's not true there are many differences this is one of the major differences so if you understand this concept, you understand that there is a difference between the case control and the retrospective cohort. In both of these studies, you will go into the past. Now, in case control, you know the disease, but you don't know the risk factor. That's why you are going into the past to see what happened, what risk factor they had. That's why they have this disease. In retrospective cohort, you don't know the disease. Here, you know the disease. In case control, you know the disease. But in retrospective cohort, you don't know the disease. And you, you just know that there was a risk factor. So you will go into the past and you will see what happened to those people. Did they develop any disease? The disease has already happened. This is very important. In retrospective cohort, the disease has already happened. When you started your research, the scientist when starts his research or when you started your research, the disease has already happened. The risk factor has already happened. So you started somewhere here. If there is an imaginary line here, you start your process, the research here, the disease has already happened and the risk factor has already happened. And now you will go and 
collect the information of the risk factor, and then you will see what happened, what disease did they develop. This is a retrospective cohort. But in case control, you start, when you start, the disease is already there. You know the patient, you know the disease. The patients are here. In retrospective cohort, you did not know the disease. Here, you know the disease, you know the patients. Patients are in front of you. You go, go into their past by asking questions. And then you understand, okay, this is the risk factor they had. That's why they developed this disease. So this is the major difference. Now, let's talk about the examples. The main issue, what are the examples? Remember, in both of them, in both study designs, we have two groups. This is very important to understand. In case control studies, we have two groups, the cases and the controls, as the name suggests, case and control, cases and controls. But in the retrospective studies, we have how many groups? We again have two groups, but we don't call them cases and controls. We call them exposed groups and unexposed groups. So in retrospective cohort, we have exposed and unexposed groups. So we have two groups. In case control, we have two groups, cases and controls. I'm giving you an example. Let's say I am a scientist. I want to do a case control study first. I'll go into the past, but I have two groups. So when I select patients, when I selected my sample, I, let's say, want to study lung cancer. The most commonly used example is the lung cancer, right? So lung cancer. I have lung cancer patients in my hospital. Let's say I have 100 lung cancer patients. So these are my cases but I also need some controls. I will also have some control patients who will either be healthy, but they are not actually patients. That's why we are calling them control group or they will have tuberculosis or pneumonia or some other kind of lung disease, but they don't have the lung cancer. So the control group actually, either they are healthy or they have some other kind of disease. So that's why they are control group. They have no disease at all, or they have some other kind of disease. So now in case control, I have two groups. I have lung cancer patients, 100 patients, and I have 100 tuberculosis patients or pneumonia patients or healthy patients, okay? So 100, 100. Now I'll start my process. I will take history of all of these 100 patients and these 100 patients. So now I'm going into their past by asking questions. I'll go into their past. I collect the information. Now I have the information that, okay, so 70% of these who develop lung cancer, they smoked. They used to smoke cigarettes, 10 packs a day, for example. They used to smoke cigarettes, 10 packs a day, and 70% of them, they develop lung cancer. And those who are healthy, only 5% of them smoke. Or only 10% of them were smokers or tuberculosis, only five or 10% 10, 10 of them were smokers. So now you know that, okay, that means lung cancer is highly, highly associated with smoking. So you study the risk factor by going into the past, by asking questions or checking electronic medical records. And you found out they were smokers. Majority of them were smokers and who were smokers, they developed lung cancer. And those who did not smoke much, who did not smoke a lot, they did not develop any lung disease or they remain healthy or if they develop, they just had infection, but they did not have lung cancer. This is an example of the case control study. Now, the retrospective cohort. How do we do retrospective cohort study? Let's say I know that there is a factory and in that factory, there was a blast or explosion in 1995. And I know this, this was in the news, for example. And I know that when there was an explosion, there was some dangerous chemical exposure in that factory. But I don't know what happened after that, but I just know the explosion. So I will go to this factory and I'll talk to the factory owner. And I'll say, I read in the news that in 1995, your factory had a very bad explosion, a terrible explosion. So many people died and the chemical exposure happened here and so many people also survived. So can you please tell me about that incident? Now he will tell you about that incident. Yes. Now you say, Okay, can I get the information, contact information? Now, this is very important. Listen to me. Can I get the contact information of all those employees who were working that day? Because I want to interview them and I want to see if they developed any disease or illness or any problem. Now, he told you, the factory owner, that on that day, we had 100 people working in that location or in this factory. 20 have already passed away and we have 80 people left. Some are still working and some are not. So here is the list of those 80 people. Please call them and contact Contact them. So now you started calling and contacting these 80 people and you found out that out of those 80 people, 60 people develop skin cancer. Now you can easily say that skin cancer is associated with that chemical. Was it lead? Was it arsenic? Whatever it was, whatever chemical it was, we don't know. You know, because you are doing this research and you know the story. Okay. So I'm just giving an example. So now you know that there was a chemical explosion of arsenic, for example, and 
Now you have the data of 80 people. You call them and you found out, okay, 60 of them or 55 of them develop skin cancer. Now you know that there is an association of this chemical with skin cancer. All the skin cancer has already happened. And some of them have already died. And those who died were also, they were also diagnosed with skin cancer or they died of skin cancer, for example. So now you clearly know that, okay, there is an association of skin cancer with this chemical. That's a retrospective cohort study. See, the disease has already happened, but you did not know that the disease had happened. In case control, you knew the disease had happened and you knew what disease had happened. You had the patients in front of you, but in retrospective cohort, you knew something would, would have happened, but you were not sure. You did not know who those, those patients were, but you knew there was an ex explosion and there was a risk factor. So you knew the risk factor, but you did not know about the disease. You did not know about the patients. But in case control, you knew the patients, you knew the disease, but you did not know about the risk factor. So this is how the major difference is done between the retrospective cohort and case control study. Let me give you another example of retrospective cohort study. Let's say in 2001, we had that terrible accident, 9-11, the greatest disaster in the human history. So many people died. Let's say now you are a researcher and now you go to New York and you go into that area where there were twin towers and you now start to talk to all those stores and those restaurants out there and you ask them questions that I want to talk to those employees who were working that day. When 9-11 happened. Can I get the data of those people? And let's say you get those, you got that data. So now you have that data. You talk to 100 restaurants out there and you found out that they had employees who were working out there on that day. So you have a list of now 300 people that worked in that restaurant or those stores on the that same street where 9-11 happened. And you know that there was a big explosion because of the airplanes and whatever happened that day. So that was a poisonous gas and poisonous exposure. So you know there were multiple chemicals involved. There would be lead, there would be arsenic, there would be other poisons, whatever were involved. So you make a list of possible poisons, possible exposure. So now you know exposure and but you don't know if any disease happened to them and you don't know these people, but you collected that information. So now you have the data of 300 people. Now you contacted each of those 300 people and you found out later after calling them that 275 of them are still alive. 25 of them have passed away, for example, or have moved to any other country or any other place and you could not get hold of them. But you got the data of 275 people and out of those 275 people, you found out that 220 of them, they developed PTSD. So that's a different story. They developed PTSD, but now you found out, did they have any bodily symptoms? Some of them told you that, yes, we developed lung cancer. Or let's say they will say, yes, for unknown reason, we just have digestive problems. So now you can make an association that the chemicals that were released during the explosion may have an association with stomach problems or intestinal problems, or they may have an association with PTSD, although PTSD is associated with trauma. We all know that. So this PTSD could be because of trauma or because of the chemicals. We don't know, but highly likely because of the trauma. So there will be a confounding factor. That's why ideally, ideally, if you are checking a chemical, check a bodily symptom. A bodily symptom like skin cancer, lung cancer, or any deafness, any problems in their eyes, any problems in their nose, ENT region, any problem in their hair, any problem in the intestinal lining, any problem in their digestive system, any problem in their bones, any problem in their blood. Do they have any blood cancer? Do they have any blood problems? Do they have any connective tissue disorders? So it's ideal to ask the physical symptoms if there has been an exposure of chemicals. So now you know that, okay, these people who had this kind of exposure of these dangerous chemicals, they develop this kind of disease. So you did not know what disease they develop and you did not know these patients. And yes, can we do a psychological study like this, uh, a study of psychiatry, yes, 9-11 accident, 9-11 terrible accident and PTSD. But you don't know the patients, you don't know if they have developed PTSD. But when you interviewed them, you found out that out of 300, 200 developed PTSD. So that can also be a psychiatric study. It is a psychiatric retrospective cohort study that they had a risk factor of an accident, a traumatic accident that led to PTSD later. But you did not know the disease that did they develop any PTSD or depression or anything? And you did not know the patients. So yes, it can be a psychiatric study, retrospective cohort, or it could be a bodily symptom related study. And that could also be a retrospective study. And case control, you can use any example of any disease. I hope now I am able to explain pretty well the difference between retrospective cohort and case control studies with exams. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you still haven't understood the concept clearly, please type the comments below. Type your questions below. I will try to get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you. Keep learning. Keep watching.